Today we are finally going to dive into one of the hardest families of all to work with in Florida the Pacific Northwest, and that is the Poaceae. One of the reasons for this is that Poaceae is, has a really unique anatomy to its flowers. So let's talk quickly about the anatomy of Poaceae flowers, and then we'll come back to keying out this common grass here that I've set aside. Today's key, we're going to look at this grass right here. It's a common prairie grass. You get a good look at the, the nature of how this thing is growing. These inflorescence heads hanging out here like this. See the stamens. And we're going to talk a little bit about the grass anatomy and exactly what we're looking at here. Let's begin. One of the nice things about Poaceae is that often you can get away without looking at the flowers at all to identify Poaceae in the field. For example, Poaceae leaves are known to be clasping around the stems, and so we say the blade clasps and it has a sheath, and the throat of that sheath can either be sutured shut or it can be open. So key uh, diagnostics will ask you about the nature of the sheath. Next, you can have oracles at the end of that sheath. And those, those oracles can be little kind of pointy or ear-like flaps that come off the end of the sheet. Then the blade bends away from the sheath and as it does there's a little ligule, kind of a membranous ligule, it looks a lot like a fingernail often or something like that that comes up behind um, where the blade branches <clears throat> from the main stem, from the culm. There are also nodes to think about, so keep those in mind. The texture and the length of this ligule is often diagnostic for many species of grass. Finally, it can either be ragged or smooth or even hair-like with a membranous base and a fringe of hairs. So that's good to keep in mind. Rhizomes often connect grass and so you can have asexual reproduction through rhizomes. That can be an important characteristic. Sometimes the bulbous nature of a tuber or the base of the stem is important. So that's important to keep in mind. <coughs> You can have um, scale leaves that are almost under, underground, and you can have stolons that run above ground that connect uh, individual ramets of a grass. Finally though, grass flowers themselves are very different. So here is an inflorescence. We would call this a spikelet, it's opened, and the uh, Rachula is elongated, so the ratula being the center part there. Within that spikelet, we have individual florets, and those florets contain flowers. Each flower often will branch from the ratula, and it will contain a lemma and a palea. So no longer are we talking about petals and sepals, we're talking about lemma and a palea. But we can have a little spikelet, and that spikelet can be subtended by glooms. So now we have all sorts of new terminology to keep track of. We have glooms, we have a lemma, and a palea surrounding an individual floret, which will have an ovary and a stigma and stamen. <coughs> These florets, of course, can just be staminate, or they can be perfect, just as in other flowers. The nature of the glooms and their articulation is very important. The shape of the lemma and the palea is very important. Finally, on an individual floret, there may be an on that you have to keep track of, and that on uh, can be various lengths or various textures, 
and is often diagnostic for a given uh, for a given flower. Occasionally, you can have sterile branches that are important to know about. Okay, that's the basics, but I think we'll learn a lot more as we dive in and start actually keying out an individual grass in the family Poaceae. Taking some time to get to know the terminology we just discussed will help you in keying these out. As we key out this flower, it's going to be really important to do some dissections to understand what's what inside each of these spikelets. Inside of each spikelet, of course, we have that rachila, and then we have individual florets. Here I've got a close-up view of individual stamens. I've got a couple florets. Here I've separated out just a single floret for this flower. See our nice awned lemma there. Glooms, one of the, our glooms is broken, one is above the other. See our stamens hanging out there, three nice stamens. And two feathery stigma lobes coming off of an ovary that's set down in the middle. So I have an on lemma, a palea, and our other flowering parts in a single floret. Now, of course, in this individual plant, most of our flowers look more like this. And we have multiple florets with some really large glooms around them. And only occasionally will we have a single or just a couple florets inside. In this view, I've separated the spikelet from the glooms. You can see those hairs again, pretty clear on the margin of the lemma. Keying the Poaceae. Now, the Poaceae are a large and diverse family. There are many, many genera, and some of these genera we can pull out very quickly. You'll notice some common genera like Poa and Festuca pull out right away in the key. So all the way, all ready by 3A and 3B, we can decide if we have a Poa or a Festuca. That makes it us lucky. Otherwise, we have to go into various groups and the Poaceae can be a large and confusing family to key out. To get through our key to a grass, it's important to remember the difference between a spikelet and a floret. It's going to come at us again and again and again as we think about the grass. So here I have an inflorescence, and you can see that um, my inflorescence is composed of individual spikelets there's three anthers coming out of that one right there, which is kind of nice. There's another spikelet there. Another one there. Each spikelet is composed of florets. So an individual floret will be each of these individual on flowers that are inside the spikelet. And the spikelet, of course, is enclosed by two long glooms. Two, one, two. And a really nice view. There. You can see our individual florets coming off there and the two glooms. And of course, those florets have an on uh, lemma 
and then enclosed inside each florette is a palea. Take a minute to look at that in just a second. Let's start our key. In our key to groups in Florida, the Pacific Northwest, our first choice is spikelets enclosed in a spiny burr-like fascicle or spikelets not enclosed in a spiny burr-like fascicle. There are spikelets certainly not enclosed in a burr-like fascicle. 2A all or most spikelets producing bulblets instead of florets and seeds. You'll notice in this key they're using FLTS for florets instead of flowers. So what this would look like if these were producing bulblets is we would have little tiny grass bulbs, little seedlings that are produced at the end here instead of our flowers. You can see our exerted stamens there very clear uh, flowers occurring in each floret, and we do not have to go with spikelets producing bulblets instead of florets and seeds. 2b, flowers normally producing flowers and seeds. Now this is the tricky one. In fluorescence, a spike, spike-like condensed panicle, dense head, raceme hiding in there, or single spikelet. If a panicle, the branch is not easily seen at arm's length, even when the inflorescence is bent to the side, or inflorescence a panicle. So, the pictures are gonna be helpful for us here. Here's our inflorescence. And one of the tricky things about grasses is we're gonna talk about the inflorescence as the arrangement of those spikelets rather than the arrangement inside the spikelet. So once we get to the gloom, um, then uh, we get to talk about it. So um, we're talking about those as the structures and how those are arranged. And so in, because all grasses have um, spikelets and florets, they have that kind of arrangement. So now we have to talk about that. And we can go with 1A for raceme because we have a central axis and then we're branching just once. When we took group one, which is here, we, went with, we were going with 4A and this is what 4A looks like. So we do not have a spike like this, which is where this starts, but we do have more of a raceme with elongated pedicels. And it didn't talk about the length of the pedicels in the raceme. It just said, is it a raceme? Well, this would be a raceme, and these are this is a raceme with very short pedicels. Um, and ours is a little different than that, but still it fits raceme. So with that, we can move to group 1A inflorescence a spike, spike-like panicle or head, inflorescence branches, none are obscure. Mm, we don't love that. I really don't love that, but we're going to go with it. And I think it'll work for this key, but um, the other one would be an option. But look at this. Spikelets one per inflorescence. Hmm. Here's another example here where I have just one spikelet. Here's my spikelet. And I think what we're talking about here is that our inflorescence, we're actually going to call our inf inflorescence in this key couplet each one of these. So one per inflorescence. Does it look familiar to us? It sure does. 
So in this case, we have one spikelet per inflorescence. So we could call this a raceme, or we could call it a single spikelet per inflorescence. Our first choice here, inflorescence of spikes, spike-like panicle or head, inflorescence, bran inflorescence branches none to obscure. I don't like that whole thing, but we like it better if we call each one of these an inflorescence. If we do that, we would say spikelets, our first key couplets here would be spikelets one per inflorescence or spikelets two or more per, per inflorescence. Given what we just talked about, if this is, we're gonna call this my inflorescence, I have one spikelet per inflorescence. Plants perennial, glooms greater than the florets, um, often enclosing them. See those giant purple glooms there are much greater than my florets, which are the individual components there. And because my glooms are so large, pretty much enclosing the florets, I get to go with that first choice. And so this keys out rather cleanly, except for that little understanding the nature of the, the inflorescence question to Danthonia. We're going to call this one spikelet per inflorescence rather than multiple here. And Danthonia is our choice. Here's Danthonia. Spikelets at least one centimeters, several flowered, articulated above the glooms. We haven't talked about that articulation, but that has to do with how the seeds break off from the glooms. And so articulating above the glooms would mean when these seeds are formed, they would split, leaving the glooms behind. Born in rather small, often much reduced, terminal panicles or racemes or solitary. So we liked either raceme here or solitary. Glooms generally greater than the florets, rounded to keeled mostly three to five nerved. So if we were gonna look very closely at these glooms, we should be able to actually count nerves on the glooms. Whoa, excuse the blurriness there. So you'll have to work on that on your own. But you can often see lines or nerves, and we don't need that to key it out, we're just reading the des description. So uh, you might make sure that um, if you're keying this exact same grass that it's consistent with that. Lemma's broadly rounded, pillows on the margins and over the back, um, or glabrous. And if you look closely, um, at some of the images that we've looked at earlier, um, you would have seen the uh, fine herring, uh, fine hairs on the lemmas. The callus is bearded, but the lemma itself, but the rachila itself is glabrous. Stamens three, we counted that. Um, Cespitose perennials, the columns are hollow. They generally have open sheaths. If we look closely at this sheath, once again, you can see that one is just falling away from the stem there. So relatively open. You can see those uh, right where it bends away, where the blade bends away from the sheath. Um, you can see the sheath has been open. In this case, it's just started to pull away from the stem naturally. You'll see there's no clear ligule here to speak of. If there is one, it's just a series of hairs. So now we go into the actual key. Our first uh, question here is lemmas onless or lemmas with a twisted and bent on. And it doesn't take much observation 
to recall that these are very strongly on. Those little spiky bits we have coming off the edge there, those are our ons. And uh, this is a very clearly on plane. So we can go with lemmas with a twisted and bent on and on to the next. Our next couplet here is pedestals generally greater than the spikelets, at least towards the base of the inflorescence. Longer inflorescence branches stiffly spreading to reflexed or arched uh, ascending. Well, we've got some nice examples of these pedestals here, um, and these are stiffly spreading. See how they just kind of are shooting out from the side there. Uh, maybe ref reflex in some cases, I can imagine that, but we're going to go with that. So our final choice here is 3A, lower branches or pedestals of inflorescence stiffly spreading, we agree with that, to reflex to maturity. So you can see those stiff spreading pedestals. Pedestals mostly greater than the spikelets, that's absolutely true upper stem leaf blade stiffly spreading or reflexed. Look at how nicely this one is reflexed for us. Inflorescence mostly racemos. So there's that inflorescence uh, issue we dealt with again before, but now it's confirmed that we're looking at a raceme here. Branches or pedestals with a swollen base. It's in grasslands, bald, savanna, swale, sea bluffs, rocky slopes. This can go from uh, southern BC, both sides of the Cascades to California, all the way to New Mexico, Chile, um, and uh, introduced in some other places. And look at how nicely this particular inflorescence we've grabbed here just nicely maps on to exactly what we might expect in a raceme from the illustration here. This is Danthonia californica.